Hello everyone, welcome back to this Microsoft Excel tutorial journey with me on my Knowledge Factor YouTube channel. This is the 93rd session and uh, we are learning the pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. So let's take a look at how we can modify the Excel pivot table and their calculation that are happening inside the value section of our pivot table. Right? So if we look closely at our value section, we dropped sales in there. Right? and looked at the data and say oh sales so that's a numeric data and I can sum that right so it returned it as a sum summary right it summed up all the sales in our cases sales for each month broken up by the product right because of the way we laid our pivot table out now that's great and uh, and and that's that's how our default Excel sees numeric data and wants to sum it uh, but we can change that Right? Maybe I don't want to sum, maybe I want to average or I want to uh, do a minimum or maximum or I want something else other than the sum because that's what my report needs. That's what we want to view. Great. We are going to take a look at uh, how to modify that. Now, there's another default that Excel uses. Take a look at this. So if I take that sales out, I just drag it out and let's say I drop it and uh, it's gone now let's grab the salesperson and I drag that down to the value section now think about this before I drop it salesperson is uh, not a numeric value right they are names like Pollen Smith and so on right so Excel is not going to be look at that and say I'm going to sum that so what do you think it's going to do what's it going to do with the salesperson I'm going to go ahead and drop it well, what did it do? What are these number represents? We got 18 for month of January for frozen yogurt. Oh, that's the count, right? It's counting how many times a salesperson value showed up for that month and that specific product. That's pretty cool. We are essentially getting a count of orders for each month and each product. Very cool. And, and that's just the default because salesperson was a text value. It looked at and said, what can I do? I can count it. I can't sum it, so I'm going to count it. Great. Those were defaults. If, if it's numeric, it's going to sum it. If it's text, it's going to count it. Now, let's take that back out. Drop the salesperson. And now we have to put the sales back in there. Now just to make this a little bit clearer on the screen, I'm going to remove type. When I drop that out of there now, we just got total sales, sum of sales for each month. Great information. Well, what if I also want the average sales for each month? I want both of them. I want the sum of sales and I want the average of sales. Well, if I grab sales, a second time and drag it down there remember the default it gave us another sum right so those two columns are identical other than their name but if I go down as sum of sales to give that a click and I'm going to value field settings and here I'm going to change it from a sum to an average and let's get rid of number two from here doesn't need that average of sales I'll hit OK and now we have got our average sales and uh, you could format that as well you can go back into the field value field settings get back to the number format we just look at we just took a look at this right and I can change that to a currency value and there we go Right. So we can modify the calculations. We don't have to stick around with the defaults that Excel gave us. Right? They have got other options for us to take advantage of. Now let's take a look at another option here. One more option in modifying the calculation. I'm going to remove the average. Let's just get rid of that one. Now we have just got the sum of sales. And you know I, I love how quickly you can modify a pivot table. Just drag and drop. Right? Like I don't want that anymore, just drag it out. 
right you, you just drag your fields so cool so now we got just total sales by month well what if i also want to see uh, did we increase or decrease month over month so from january to february did we go up in sales did we go down in sales from february to march did we go up did we go down from march to april did we go up did we go down i want to know that right how, how would you do that well uh, you could do some calculations or uh, maybe you you subtract the two values and then you look at them and say well uh, did it go up did it go down but what if i want a percentage rate how, how much of a percent did we increase or decrease now we are getting a little more complicated here but stay hold on that um, well pivot table uh, actually makes it really simple to do let's take a look if i grab sales again the second time and i'm going to drop it into the value section so now we got our original sum we got our secondary sum there but i'm going to modify that one so I'm going to go to the sum up sales to value field settings. Now, very important here, it 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 is currently a sum. Uh, that that's how this column here is being represented, right? It's summing up the values for each month. Great. But then we are going to move to the second tab, show values as on the show value tab right now currently says no calculation, which is a bit deceiving because we are applying a sum to that column. But how do we want to display that? How do we want to uh, show those values? Well, uh, rather than no calculation or standard sum in this case, I'm going to change it to, uh, we got a couple of options here. We can do grand total, column total, difference from, and I want to do a difference from the prior month, right? from February to January, from March to February, from April to March and so on. Or, or we can do a percent difference from. So difference from and percent difference from. Do you want a whole number or do you want a percentage? Now, in my particular case, I'm going to say percent. So I'm going to do a percent difference from. Now, it has two things that it needs us and needs us to fill in uh, the base field and the base item, right? Well, our base field that's already there, it's it's the month. That's how we want to compare stuff. We want to compare February to January. We want to compare March to February and April to March and so on and so on, right? It's it's the month that we want to base this off of. The, the base item is the previous month. Currently, it's going to base everything off of February, which might be good. Uh, maybe you had a stellar month, right? Your, your sales were through the roof and June right and and now i want to compare every other month against june do we go up do we go down right where we are what percentage were we we could do that here but for this example base it's it's going to be a month and the base item is the previous compared the base item the current month against the previous month and so on and that's it so i could change its name if i want to call this monthly percentage or month over month whatever we want to call it i will hit OK and we have now got our increases or decreases right so let's format the sum of sales just to make them a little bit clearer let's make sure those are currency values there we go so between February and January we increased by one point one roughly one and a half percent between month of march and february we dropped we dropped by almost 19 uh, percent in our sales but then in april we went up between april and march we went up about 50 percent in sales and so on very cool very very cool and, and just a couple of drags in the mouse and we are done right and modifying the calculations that are taking place in there so make sure you try this out that was a bit to go through we covered a bit of uh, topics inside there but uh, all about modifying the calculations in a pivot table so get into the field list get into the specific field value field setting and you can modify the default calculations there to fit your needs try it out